Well, hi there. I'm Jen Hackman. I'm the Economic Development Manager for the City of Pullman, and I will be reading two books for you today. The first one is this book, Sylvia and Bird, written and illustrated by Katherine Rayner. This book is about a lonely, shimmer shiny dragon who meets a small chatty bird and their unlikely friendship. Sylvia and Bird. In a faraway place on a high mountaintop lived a shimmer shiny dragon named Sylvia. Sylvia loved her leafy home, but sometimes she felt sad. You see her there looking sad? She had searched the whole world, but never found any other dragon. Sylvia was lonely. She gave a big blustery sigh. <sighs> and there under the leaves was a small surprised bird. Bird was building a nest, and Sylvia thought she might be able to help. Bird and Sylvia became friends. Look at Sylvia helping build the bird's nest. She's got a twig in her mouth. Being together was so much fun. Here they are swimming together. Bird and Sylvia spent all their days together, just like friends do. But when Bird went to chit-chatter with the other birds, Sylvia felt alone. Bird belonged with the other birds, but Sylvia was different. She had no dragons to belong with. Sylvia crept away. She gazed up at the night sky. Maybe there were other dragons living on the moon. She could go and see, but the thought of leaving Bird made Sylvia feel sadder than ever. But Bird saw that Sylvia was unhappy. There's Bird right there. She had an idea. They would go to the moon together. What a fun idea. Off they set racing up through the clear blue skies. But as Bird and Sylvia whirled higher and higher, Bird grew cold and tired. Suddenly she began to tumble down, down, down through the clouds. With a cry, Sylvia swooped to catch her tiny friend and gently carried her home and there they stayed for Sylvia realized she didn't need other dragons to be happy the best friend in the world was loving loyal bird the end okay so let's start the other book now this other book that we're going to read is called Izzy Gizmo, written by Pip Jones and illustrated by Sarah Ogilvie. This is a very colorful book. So let's open this one up. And look at all of these, all of this machinery. There's Izzy right there. Izzy Gizmo, a girl who loved to invent, carried her tool bag wherever she went. In case she discovered a thing to be mended or a gadget to tweak to make it more splendid.
But the trouble with things that have dials and switches is they don't always work. They have certain glitches. The Temendus, for instance, did such a fine job, Temendus, I think, till out popped a piston and off dropped a knob. Oh, and look what happened. <laughs> it watered the plant. Then the swirly sped Sonic for eating spaghetti turned Grandpa's wallpaper into confetti. Uh-oh. The beard-tastic had Grandpa near perfectly styled till the foam overflowed and the clippers went wild. Look at Grandpa upside down. Well, Isabel, who was so clever and bright, would r get rather cross when things didn't go right. Do you ever feel like that? I know I do. And she huffed, it's too tough. I've had it. I quit. She kicked her invention and called it a twit. Isabel fumed. Grandpa smiled and chuckled. You can't just quit because that thingy bob buckled. Now trust me, young lady, sometimes you need to try again and again if you want to succeed. Perhaps Grandpa was right, but still, Isabel sighed. She picked up her tool bag and wandered outside. Kicking the stones on the path as she walked, Izzy jumped at a bump. Up ahead, something squawked. From the clouds, a poor crow had taken a tumble and landed, kapoof, in a feathery jumble. Izzy ran to the vets, but he just shook his head. His wing is too broken to fix, the doc said. Perhaps take him home and there you could try to teach him to live as a crow who can't fly. Aww. Day after day, Izzy thought she had found something fun for her crow to do on the ground, like digging for worms and racing flat, fat slugs, hopscotch and hoopla and searching for bugs. But the heartbroken crow simply gazed at the sky as the other birds sang and flew happily by. One night with the crow in the folds of her sweater, Izzy sighed, oh, I wish I could make him feel better. I've tried, he won't play, he won't drink, he won't eat. She was so very close to admitting defeat. Grandpa said, Izzy, don't give up on him now. I know you can do it, just work out how. Then Grandpa passed Izzy her gadgety things, and she knew what to do. I'll invent some new wings. Izzy piled up her books and started to read. Then she made a long list of all the things she would need. She searched for some batteries and old electronics, dismantled a mixer and the swirly spag sonic. The crow watched, entranced, and he held Izzy's drill while she bent, bashed and battered, and walloped until, ta-da! Izzy fastened the wings with a strap, but they hummed and they twitched, far too heavy to flap. Ugh, Izzy yelled, I'm no good at succeeding. The crow softly cawed, his beady eyes pleading. What now, Izzy cried. Try again, Grandpa said. Okay, follow me. And with that, off she sped. Izzy dove in a pond where she borrowed a pump. Then she took from an engine two sprockets, a sump. Izzy fastened the wings, they were light. They were curvy, but the wings, the wrong shape, turned the crow topsy-turvy upside down. I give up, 
Izzy yelled with a furious frown. The crow sadly cawed as he hung upside down. Izzy unscrewed the head from the shower, found special circuits to adjust the wing's power, and finally using her trusty old pliers, she borrowed the motors from two big blow dryers. Yes, Izzy said, the right shape, perfect weight. But one wing flapped madly. The crow couldn't fly straight. I've had it, yelled Izzy, heading straight for a bin. But the crow plucked her path. He just wouldn't give in. He's determined. Izzy twizzled and tinkered, and using his beak, the tip-tapping crow gave the screws a good tweak. Then he loosened the cog from Grandpa's old mixer. You can fly, Izzy cried. Oh, your name should be Fixer. After two loop-the-loops, Fixer came in to land and stood happily cawing upon Izzy's hand. You tried very hard, Grandpa said, and succeeded. You kept at it, Izzy. You did what was needed. But don't pack your tools up. Your day's not quite ended. A few things around here now need to be mended. The end.